John chapter 5, verse 5 through 9. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he had he had he been he had been now a long time in that case. He said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered and answered him, Sir, I have no man, when the water is troubled, to put me in the pool into the pool, but while I am coming another step it down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. This passage of scripture to me it says as men, there's two type of men. There are men that lay around and there are there are men that get up and move. This man right off the bat just right off the bat he showed qualities that a man shouldn't have. He shouldn't be lazy. Uh, should be lying around waiting on someone to come help him. If a man is a man that stands on his own, too, if he's ready, if he's strong enough, uh, he should be able to get up and move. Um, now, this, this passage of Scripture also points out two points I'm just, just going to speak about, just two points. Um, if your blessing is sitting right there, it, it says the, the water was troubled. And he was just waiting for someone to come help him in. Now, it, it didn't say he was paralyzed. It just said he had an infirmity, right? So to me, that means he was able to move just a little bit. He, he got there somehow. So the blessing is right there. And if you are a man and you see your blessing right there in front of you, if you're motivated enough, wiggle, you know. Do pull yourself, you know, your upper body is still there. Pull yourself to that blessing. Pull yourself to, to that healing because the healing and everything that he needed was right there in that pool. But for some odd reason, he didn't want to move. He wanted to wait for someone to come help him. Um, so he wasn't motivated enough for me. And as a man, I feel like that motivation starts in your heart. If, if if your motivation is in your heart is um is strong, if your t- determination is strong, if your will is strong, if your drive is strong, you don't need no one else to move you. You can make that up in your own mind and push it out through your heart. Now the water was was troubled; it was bubbling, and that signified that okay, well it's time for this healing. So, uh, what does this man do? Actually. Absolutely nothing. He does not move at all. So we already know that he's a lazy, unmotivated man. Now he went he went on from there to say, let's see, in verse seven, I have no man when the water is troubled. I have no man. So we can go ahead and see right there he was waiting for someone to help him and he was counting on another man to help him. That's why I draw another issue. When you are a man of God, you don't wait for no man to help you. Uh, You can put your trust in man, but we can, I'm pretty sure at this point in our life, we can say, okay, man will let you down. And as you can see, uh, it said, but I am coming another step down before me. So man will only help you when it concerns anything that that pertains to him when it's beneficial for him at sometimes you know, when it pertains to him. But most of the time, a man will walk right by you. I was, um, I was coming out of the bank one day and I seen my daughter, she hold you know, she was holding the door for me. So I said, okay, well that's, that's fine. You know, I'm gonna grab the door and, um, I'm gonna walk out. But she <coughs> held the door right behind me and another man walked right by her. Now, I, I, I draw issue with this because, like I said, a man has to have certain qualities, and you can't be lazy about some stuff. So when he walked by her, he said, oh, thank you, thank you, little girl, you know. And she said, you're welcome, blah, blah, blah. So when she let the door go and came to me, I said, um, I appreciate you holding that door for him, but 
Don't you hold that door for another man. And, and the man was still right there because he was waiting on the ATM. He was like, I guess he just he had felt some type of way. He said, oh, well, thank you, little girl. That was really nice of you. And I'll say it again. Thank you, Sierra. That was really nice of you. But you're a lady and he's a man. So the man's supposed to come and grab the door from you. That's the part of being a man. There's some high roads you're supposed to take. And as a man, you have to be mindful that your steps are already supposed to be ordered in the Lord, by the Lord. So there are some things that you already magically supposed to know. And being courteous and, you know, that type of stuff, your motivation is supposed to be there for uh, doing certain stuff like that. You have to be mindful that when it comes to that young lady or your daughters and stuff like that, take that first step. Don't even wait for them to see if they're going to do it. Just take that first step. So I got in on her about it. You know, I, I explained to her. But that's that's a man's job. You know, if if you're a man, you're going to walk right by a 10-year-old, a 10-year-old holding the door for you. To me, that says a lot about your character. Um, yeah, that was nice and everything, but... I'm sorry, you're not 90 years old. You can hold that door for yourself and let this little girl go. Um, however, he was waiting for another man to come help him. And in the process, he forgot all about his determination. He forgot all about his motivation. He forgot all about who he was, was still a man. And he just let that go. So uh, if God is showing you a blessing, and it's right there in front of you, and you have no motivation to get it, no determination to get it, no drive to get it. You can't blame no one else but yourself. So, the water was troubled. He didn't want to move. He's sitting there waiting for another man to come help him. No man comes to help him. And he sits there all of this time, and this is the second point. Then Jesus comes. So the first time we have an issue of this man not motivated enough to go get his blessing. Um, in areas of our life, uh, I feel like that's, that's very strong for us to know that as men, we're supposed to be able to, you know, pull our pants up, lace out, lace up our shoes, our boots, buckle our belt, and go out and get God's blessing as a man. But if we don't do that, sometimes he come back around again. And here comes the second point. Jesus steps in and says, okay, well, you know what? I'm the man that you need to focus on. I'm the man that you need to know that will help you in your time. You're sitting here waiting on someone else to come. They ain't coming. It's, it's me. You, you need me. So Jesus come, and immediately, immediately, he's sitting there saying, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> sitting waiting on someone that's not coming. What are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm just waiting, you know, for someone to come help me out. No, 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 no. Get up. <laughs> Get up. And the scripture didn't say, oh, he said, um, Jesus, right now? Uh... Can I try it? Can I do it? Immediately. Immediately. It happened instantaneously. He didn't argue with him. He didn't try to go around circles who, what, why, when, where, why, whatever. He just immediately, the man was made whole, took up his bed, and walked off. That's how instant God can bless you. Even after you done sat down and wasted your blessing, and you could have had it yourself, you could have pulled yourself to that blessing, God comes around and said, here's your chance again. And the second point we need to drive, I'm trying to drive in is every day of our life, we need Jesus. Every day of our life. Um, we don't need nobody else. We don't need to think about um, if we're waiting for a handout, if we're waiting for someone to come say, hey, you know, help, let me help you out or whatever. We need to first know that God is there the whole time. And then from that point on, God will make provisions after that. He will make way after that. And, excuse me, <coughs> he'll make sure that we're taken care of. So, as men of God, 
we have to be we have to be motivated. We have to be determined. Our families, our friends, our um, relatives, they are all dependent on us being motivated men. And if we're not motivated men, then that's going to stop something in their life. They're looking for something um, in their life. And we're the key piece to that puzzle. And if we're not ready for for that task, for that uh, that work, then I think we should just step aside, go to God, and make sure that we are praying for the right things. And that's definitely pray, praying that um, uh, his will be done first. And we're leading and loving our families the way he wants us to. Um, I'm, I'm going to give you give you uh, an example here. This have y'all seen the Courageous movie? The, the movie Courageous. Have y'all got the book? This is the um, it's a devotion book. It's pretty long, so I haven't got to but the chapter like four, I believe. It's pretty long, but picture if you will, um, driving in a road. And all of a sudden, you wake into I'm 11 minutes. You wake into screaming, and you open your eyes, and you look to your right, and your wife is in in her emotions and her feelings, crying. And you look, and her arms are locked on the steering wheel. You look in front of her, and look out the window, and you're riding on the side of the road into oncoming traffic. She overcorrected because you fell asleep. So now you're head first into an 18-wheeler that's coming right at you. At that point, you look to her and you said, let go. And she does nothing. She's frozen in fear. She says, let go. So at that moment, you take the wheel and you jerk it to the, to the right and you back into the right side of the traffic. However, you're standing, going right into the guardrail. You're riding down the guardrail. And you're still standing her, sitting there and telling her, let go, let go. She will not let go. And then all of a sudden, that same thing that was causing you to veer outside that road is your lack of focus. It's the same thing that can help you um, if you if you turn it and that's your focus. You get your thoughts together, you hit the brake, stump it, and you're sliding right into the guardrail. Looking overlooking um, this curve that would have spelled your demise. Now, when you come to a halt, everybody's crying. The kids in the back, they're crying. You look at your wife and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She looks at you and say, don't ever do that again. The point is, at times when you're going through life as a man, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to have some ups. You're going to have some downs. You're going to have some highs, you're going to have some lows, but the, the point is you have to wake up, you got to get up, be a man, and take that wheel. Your family is dependent on you. Your, your very existence is dependent on you. Where you're going, your family's going, it's dependent on you. And if you lose focus, you fall asleep at the wheel, and your wife has to take control of that wheel, and um, you really... When you're leading your family, if both of y'all are not together on the same page, you don't know where you're going. So he was trying to take this wheel, but they didn't they didn't mesh together. They wasn't working together. He was trying to let her say he was trying to tell her, hey, let me let me take control of this now. But at that point, he had already lost control. So it's hard to try to get back on track when both of y'all lost control. So as the man, as the men of God. As we are, we are given this task by God. We got to take this cross every day. We got to get up every day knowing that God gave us this authority to be the leaders of the home. But if we lose control, if we let go of this will, then our families, <coughs> our family lives are in our hand and we can be the overall cause of their demise. Amen.